the nation so
So some people at this uh and just people all the people talk about what are the new about how the how the selling should work. So in a nutshell, the this the audio processor in the NDS is quite easy. It is integrated in the this CPU as it's package. And uh, by the way, the CPU is a CPU. So it runs at 1.8 megahertz, which is one CPU block, one CPU block, which is very nice for the later. Uh, basically, it has five different channels, which is the eight CPU channels, five different sound channels. So, of the channels, two are pulse channels, pulse meaning that it will produce square waves, a white chair, triangle channel, which is a triangle wave, a white voice channel. Uh, the noise channel is kind of a uh, deal in. Like a tricky sound uh, spoon, so we can kind of find that. But sometimes people use it, it was used as uh, like a uh, uh, percussion sound. And also, there's a PMC channel called Delta Water, which is another example. For example, we can test the voices. Uh, rarely seen uh, in music, uh, you can do it from. So, I, I, I do a demo of this how this sound work. Uh, let me. So I have this. Uh... Without going too much detail, let me just uh, get a skeleton of how the channel works. So basically, uh, the audio channel, for the part, is a pulse, pulse channel, as a simplified example. Uh, at first, we have an AQ clock. AQ clock go, go inside the something we call a timer or divider. Timer or divider is just a, it's a counter where you, whereby you set a number n as a overflow value. So every clock goes in, it has a Increase the counter value until when it ends, it goes to zero. Then at the same time, it clock the next unit. The next unit is a sequencer unit. Uh, sequencer meaning a uh, sequence of steps. For example, here, there's an eight step. Uh, what, what is called the eight step of sequencer? Uh, uh, eight step of eight step. For each step, they output a value. It's a pretty strong value. So when it goes from uh, uh, step zero to step, Seven, it actually outputs a square wave. So this is one one period of a square wave. So when the clock comes to six point two, it will continue to six point two. And so this is a twenty five percent increase of square waves. Uh, within the AQ, it actually has uh, several defined tables of uh, sequences. So for the most one is a twelve point five percent, this is twenty five percent, fifty percent, and seventy five percent. So it produces slightly different sound. So to simulate this in a software, actually it's very simple. When it uses the clock first time, first thing, uh, increase the timer value. If the timer value is more than n, set to zero, increase the step index. So this is all we need to write in the in the software side. And uh, there's another function called uh, to return the pulse channel uh, output. Which is just the sum of three set table is just to send the number. So each each channel is actually organized like that. So if we want to do the whole simulation like that, also quite simple. Uh, first thing is uh, you, you define a uh, sample frequency. For example, for audio, we use this uh, forty four point one kilohertz, and we have the sub frequency, uh, the clock frequency, which is about one point eight megahertz. 
you divide this one, you get about 40 clocks. That means I need to clock APU and CPU for 40 clocks, then I do one sample. Then I clock another 40, uh, 40 clocks, I do another sample. So basically, you just, uh, you just uh, for the, uh, when we have about uh, 40 clocks, we just clock this uh, in a loop. Then after this uh, clock, I do lab loop, then we just do a sample for all. Then push on your So this is just uh, the, the gist of uh, how our integration or our emulator works. Uh, of course, this if you do this way, uh, it will work very well on our PC. But it will work, work very badly uh, in the system because it's very, very slow. The reason why of slow is because of this loop. This loop is, uh, is quite time consuming. Actually, you need to do a lot of optimization to work. Uh, especially the AP dot clock, it will, what you do is actually, you need to rewrite the function so that it gives you 40 clocks, you give the output of 40 after what is the situation after 40 clocks. Like that. So, so once we have all the samples, what we are doing is uh, uh, we need to do some buffering because we need to, uh, we also need to measure the performance of your emulator. Uh, for example, if still we are, our audio sample is 34.1 kilohertz, I, I said that each frame I need one zero to two four samples. This this is because uh, I need to send all the sample frames to our FFT unit later for the for point of the spectrum. So forty four point one kilohertz one zero two four samples. You can actually calculate it. You, you need about twenty three milliseconds. So you need to generate one zero two four samples within twenty three milliseconds. Otherwise, your program will impact the buffer in the run, and the sound will be broken. So, so this is the hard, hard requirement. If you cannot achieve the right way to do, use, use buffering. So as long as your buffer is long enough, um, you can have continuous uh, uh, audio streaming output. But at the same time, uh, this gives you give me an opportunity to optimize my code so that majority of the sample generation are within 23 milliseconds. Although I have uh, maybe one or two samples uh, because I need to read SD card or whatever, the, the time is a little bit longer. I still can utilize the buffer to overcome all the delays. So I spent about one and a half years to write the software. <laughs> it's quite slow, but I still use a lot of other libraries. So I don't call LBGL, which is a very good uh, graphics library to do the, all the UI elements like you can play with the sound. And the fat interface is used to do a reading the SD card. Uh, ARM DSP lib, it helps to do the FFT on a, a fixed point data buffer. And also this very useful thing is called blip buff, which produce a bandwidth limited output series. Uh, what it does is uh, because the, some of the channels like the square wave or the triangle wave, they produce square wave. Square wave is, uh, has an uh, infinite amount of uh, harmonics. When I sample it at uh, 44.1 kilohertz, there's a lot of uh, alien to happen and the high frequency will go back to the low frequency. It, it sounds like noisy. So the bleed buffer actually internally doing a lot of filtering for you so that it guarantees the output buff is uh, filtered uh, within the sample rate that you have been uh, assigned. So what I've learned, um, so this is uh, stay at home, do nothing, but this, uh, do this project, but this is uh, what I learned outside the project. So why in the C mix system? And uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK. It requires you to understand C mix, so I have to understand this. I, I spent like one, one week to study this. Um, Event-driven hierarchical same machine pattern. This is very nice for embedded system. If you are doing UI programming or you are handling different events like the player, it, you need to handle a lot of uh, uh, button presses, uh, like uh, earpiece, uh, plug and plug, like the SD card insert. You get all these events. You need to handle this in every state. Like you are playing or you are recording files, you all have to uh, kind of handle these events. So this is a very good pattern. Uh, state machine uh, They have uh, like a 40 over chapters uh, tutorial on YouTube very nicely 
organized. So I learned some very basics. I learned some uh, fixed point mathematics. And also, one of the most important things, if you are doing Raspberry Pi, the best place to ask questions is their forum. You will encounter the chip designer, you will encounter the SDK authors answer, answer your questions, which is very, very helpful. So that's it's just my presentation. But if you want to check this part, uh, feel free to take it from here. Uh, questions? Thank you. 